Today we're going to do mark making on the gel plate. So welcome back friends. I was looking for some deli papers, like just black, high contrast deli papers the other day when I was working on a little collage. And surprisingly, I didn't have very many. And uh, I had lots of other colors, but I didn't have black and I wanted smaller details, like smaller patterns and stuff like that. So, so I decided to do just a whole session of deli papers with black paint. So let's take a look. So I decided to start this session by looking for stencils. And I thought you might like to see how I store them. Now I use the clamshells that our deli plates come in because I do not store them in there. I have another system. So, but they are great for storing the actual stencils, you know, that you accumulate. I know, if you're anything like me, you've got a lot. I just recently bought a new plate, so I have a new clamshell. I will find a use for it very soon. I also have one of these tins from Ranger that is actually meant to be a, um, a jelly plate uh, storage container, but I, I store all my, uh, my stencils in there. So I sort my, my stencils by, you know, the ones that I don't design to the ones that I design. My masks are in a different place than my stencils. I try to keep them all sorted and that way when I want to find one that I want to use, I know where to look for it. And so I sorted these by stripes, circles, animal prints, and then these are just abstracts. Um, I have three here that I didn't know how to categorize them, so I just, I'm going to work with those at the end. But that one is my favorite. So if you've watched some of my videos, you're probably familiar with my rubber bands and my twine. I love these deli papers that I make, but you know, it's the, they're large pattern, bold pattern, and sometimes I need something simpler. And so that's what I'm going to do today. Um, I, I absolutely love the twine especially, but um, we just sometimes need really small areas with tiny pattern. So today I'm going to use Soho paint. It is a creamy paint. It's a little, it's not as fluid as um, golden fluid or the Nova paints. And it takes a little bit longer to dry, just a little bit longer. And that's because I want two prints. I want to get the positive and the negative of each one of these patterns. And I'm going to be laying two stencils down each time. And I'm just going to cover my whole plate best I can with the, this paint is covering it nicely. We're going to start out with our stripes. Now this is like a almost an optical illusion stripe and then I love this one that's kind of almost forms like cubes. And those diagonal stripes are a lot of fun. And I'm using my 9 by 12 plate and my paper is just a little bit bigger than that so it's perfect. And we don't have to wait long with deli paper. You, you don't have to wait like an, a minute and a half, two minutes. You can pull up almost as soon as you see everything transfer. Beautiful. So now, as long as we work fast enough, we can immediately get another piece of deli and pick up the negative or the ghost print. I didn't put it down so nicely. I got some wrinkles there, but that should be fine. Again, these are collage papers. This is, you know, mark making for collage. So all of these like indi individual little pieces, like you're just going to grab little pieces of these and you're going to incorporate them into collage. So you don't have to worry about it, you know, being perfect. And it's also a, a, a wonderful way to practice your jelly printing. I did leave up at the top in the center there a lot of paint. But 
but I like grunge, so, and in, and in this particular one, I, I liked the ghost print better than the positive. Okay, we're just gonna keep going. So, and make, make sure you don't put too much paint, but at the same time, you have to make sure you have enough paint. It's like after a while, you get the hang of it. Um, it's just uh, trying to figure out that, you know, happy medium. And you're, it depends on what paint you're using. It really does. So I also love this one on the left that I still think they're stripes. It's just a really fun geometric pattern that if you use just a piece of it, could be a lot of fun and dynamic in a collage. So like I said, you only have to make sure, you know, as you're using your fingers to get all the paint through those little openings, once you do that, you can lift it because the deli paper will lift right away. And it will be transparent when you're using it in collage. Fabulous stuff. And we're getting really nice, dark, even colored on the positives anyway. Obviously on the ghost, which is the negative, um, we have a little more texture. And the ghosts are leaving, I think because the paint is a little bit dry. <laughs> so it's leaving a little bit of paint each time I do this a little bit more paint gets left on the plate and they get, they get grungier and grungier as we go. As you can see. It's still a lot of fun. I don't mind, I, I like the grungy, but sometimes on the on these uh, deli papers, I like also a really clean black print as well. So I decided I wanted to try carbon black golden fluid to see if I would get better results and leave less paint on, on the ghost. But this was a mistake because it's dried way too fast and I wasn't even able to get the ghost. So make sure that slightly slower drying paint um, you can always add a retarder or something to the paint to slow it down a little bit more. You don't have to go as far as open. It doesn't have to be open paint because then you're going to be waiting forever for them to dry. You just need them to stay wet for about a minute so that you have enough time to grab another piece of paper and pick up that ghost. So some of these more intricate ones, like the circle one on the um, left-hand side, it's, it's both a stripe and a circle, so I'm putting them on the same page. Um, th this one is taking me a while to get all the way through. I'm using my thumbs to really get into those little smaller openings. I love the way it came out. Okay, so let's try to pick up this ghost. Well, I got it. I love the grunge on the on that left hand side with the stripes. We did leave a little bit more paint on the plate, but our positive prints are our first pulls are coming out beautifully. So 
So this one that I'm putting on the right hand side, I've used that so many times. It's, it's one of my favorites. So I'm pairing it with the one on the left, which is also becoming a new favorite. I wanted to make sure I used it again because I have a feeling I'm going to want a few of those at least. I love that area right there. So I'm not sure if this is the one that didn't work out, but it was one that I, when I went to pull it, no, this one was fine too. I was afraid that maybe the paint had dried already. So this Soho paint also, I only have, this is the only tube I have, and it happens to be ivory black. I'm just curious about, you know, the other, the other colors. I, it works really well on the plate. It has a similar consistency to uh, Amsterdam. And I think you get it at Jerry's Artorama. And I love these, this pattern on the left hand side. It kind of reminds me of a circus for some reason. It's just, um, they're like striped balls or something. It's just a lot of fun. It goes really well with circles, obviously, but also with stripes. That's a nice dark ghost. So I also have these other circles that I haven't played with yet. These are much smaller. I should have pulled out four probably, but I only have three that I selected. Never use those. I don't know why. Okay, I'm going to speed things up just a little bit here. We're going to do those other three circles that I just showed you. Some of these are really tiny. Really tiny. It's going to be challenging to try to pick up all those little tiny, tiny, tiny spaces. I have to tell you, my hands got to work out today because I really had a push. I don't think that a baron would have helped me. I don't think I still would have gotten into those little tiny spaces. It, it takes fingertips to do that. But I've never worked with a baron, so I have no idea. If any of you have experience with a baron and can tell me whether or not it would have gotten into those little openings, please share. <laughs> uh, 
Okay, so now we're going to pick up the ghost. It didn't make such a great ghost because it was too... Uh, well, the one in the lower left-hand corner, maybe. Um, the other two had a little too much black background. Um, I prefer a ghost that has a little bit more 50-50. And I think in, in this case, the ghost had a, on the, like I said, on that one, it uh, was an interesting ghost. So now we're going to be moving on to animal prints. So I like this one because it's just like irregular circles. And this other one almost looks like water droplets. I especially like the irregular pattern of those circles. When you're seeing just a little piece of it, it's not going to really read as animal print. Same with this. It's like on the left hand side. Just odd abstract shapes. Just really interesting abstract shapes. So you could see that I'm not waiting long to pick these up. So if you want to do a session and you don't want to, you don't have much patience that day, <laughs> do something like this because you could pick up right away. You don't have to wait for paint to dry. Uh, you don't have to do any layers with, you know, no layers actually. Um, single layer prints and great collage paper. Now the one here on the right, I've used that so many times. That, again, is like an irregular abstract, although I guess it's supposed to be like a leopard or something, but I've used it gray on black to um, add to the sides of a collage. It, I did a lot of papers with that. This other one, I don't think, I think I used it once, but I'm very, very happy with that. As, transpa as transparent papers, I think it's gonna be great. Not sure about if I'll ever use the ghost on these or not. I'm definitely loving, and look at this one. That one kind of looks almost like a cow pattern. I used to call that cow boogie because I had some, I don't know, early days of computer. I got a disc and it had like that pattern on it, a repeatable tile pattern, and it was called cow boogie. I just thought it was so funny. So I'm going to do the snake skin again because think I'm going to want that. So I'm going to want more than one. I'm going to pair it up with this one. So I will link down below if they still have them because I bought these a while back. Um, if they still have them I will link them below. They were not expensive. They are too small for a bigger plate, but you can, you know, um, use them together.
Love it. Love it. We've got to get that ghost. I was having trouble grabbing just one sheet. So I figured, let me just put all three down and then I'll get the top two off. But I don't know. Sometimes they just feel like they're stuck together. And at this point, I have so much paint on my hands that it's hard to even pick up the papers anymore. So my plate is getting a little grungy. And I, I just decide that I'm going to clean it up. So how I'm going to do that is I'm just going to add some teal paint. It's a nice opaque paint that picks up really well. Now my brayer kind of uh, reactivated some of the black that was, that was on it. But I really love the way this print came out. So I wanted you to see this really grungy print that was it probably can be used as a background. I just think it's um, unusual looking. So these are the ones that I have left that we're going to do. And as you can see, two of them I've never used before. So I'm picking this up with rice paper, so I'm waiting a good minute and a half to two minutes. I want to make sure I get all the grunge off. And I didn't. I still left that that area in the middle there. It just doesn't want to pick up. But look at this fun, I don't know, splotchiness. But I'm just going to keep going, even though we have those little droplets of uh, previous layers. Because we're still getting good prints. Now that one on the left it's very interesting and I discover later that when you look at it from you know horizontally it looks like water that's pooling you know like swirling around so it's kind of interesting and this one with the little squares different sizes and forming a pattern it's also very interesting I don't know why I never used it That's why sometimes we have to revisit, you know, what we've purchased because we haven't used it before. Maybe, you know, it's a year later and, you know, I'm, I'm in a different place now and looking at new types of things. Yeah. So what is appealing to me now maybe didn't appeal to me a year and a half ago. I think maybe this time I put down a little too much paint. I actually picked up some of the grunge on that particular one. That's weird. So it so it pulled some of the turquoise. But you know sometimes when I'm doing collage and I see that I have a bl mainly black transparent paper but that has a tiny little bit of color on it that always excites me so I definitely want more of that one on the right and that other one on the left I've used many times in the past I stopped using it after a while I was just using it so much but I do still like it it has um, it kind of looks like uh, in some ways a Japanese print, you know, like of, of the ocean. 
just a really beautiful pattern. Makes a pretty good ghost as well. I think this is the first time I've used it in black though. I think I've always used it in like shades of blue. Okay, we're gonna do a side-by-side -side recap. The one on the right is the first print. The one on the left is the ghost. I'm still, I'm leaning more towards the one on the right. Now look at how nice that, it looks like swirling water. Yeah, again and again, the one on the right is the winner. Doesn't mean that I won't use the one on the left depends on what I'm doing but in order to get the one on the right you you're left with the one on the left you might as well pick it up you don't want to waste paint I love all of these and you can see how transparent you could see the texture of my table through the paper and when you put that down with gel medium Whatever colors underneath is just going to shine through. It's it's wonderful. That one's a lot of fun. And I am, I am really loving that one on top. Again, that was one that I, I overlooked when I first purchased it. Didn't use it. Now this one I do like, the one on the left, I do like the grungy um, lines. Horizontal, what do you want to call it? Diagonal stripes. I do like the, gr the uh, grungier ghost print. So let me show you the inspiration for this whole session. So I got this new little book. And I was playing the other day, and I needed a black and white paper to put there in that white area right there. And so I'm thinking that this might be perfect. So I'm looking for like just the right spot, and I'm thinking it should also overlap the red area. So anyway, once I pick my, pick the area that I want, I'm going to trim it down. Now I did this book is supposed to be like you know uh, like a daily journal kind of thing and I'm not going to pull out the gel medium every time I want to like glue on here so I'm using this glue stick and that was my biggest mistake <laughs> because um, the transparency doesn't quite work with the gel stick the way it does with gel medium I'll, I mean with the glue stick not a gel stick um, it just, so, and I, and I overlay it over the red, and so it didn't, it didn't go transparent, and I was very disappointed, but, um, I was just trying it out, and this is my absolute first little collage in this book, so 
It's not terrible. It's not. I would have been happier if the red had really shown through the way it would have with gel medium. So I'm loving this little book. I, I'm going to be doing a lot in it and I'm going to be using the glue stick. Um, I'll be able to take this at home and do this at home. Uh, I'm not going to make a mess with gel medium at home. <laughs> but wow, what a cute little book. I'll leave a link below. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. I really, I, I loved revisiting some of those old stencils. You know, they're basic designs. They're like designs that probably, you know, have been around for, you know, centuries maybe. So anyway, these basic patterns, you know, of diagonal stripes and, you know, circles and circles and squares and squares and all that kind of stuff. It's good to have a stash of those around. And I'm glad that I pulled them out again and, you know, did a whole session. I meant to do Punchinella in just black and totally forgot. Totally forgot. I got so excited about my old stencils that I completely forgot about the Punchinella. I ended up making some more later, but off camera. Had to have them. Because I'm planning a collage for next week, so... If you aren't already subscribed, please subscribe to my channel and I will see you next time. Don't forget, create, inspire, and share. Take care. Bye-bye.